Hello, this is a presentation on accelerating retrofit in housing through modular and circular solutions. A case study from the Drive Zero project by Patrick Daly to you Dublin. Just to give you a brief personal background, my professional background is in architectural technology and project management. I have a master's in architecture in advanced energy and environmental studies and also a master's in research methodologies in sustainability in the built environment. Over the last decade or more, I've developed a specialism in sustainability in the built environment. I'm involved in energy efficiency, design and analysis, particularly modeling and simulation, and also in environmental design in alternative constructions and alternative materials. And from this research, I'm developing an interest in circularity. I'm a lecturer researcher in the School of Architecture and the Built Environment in TU Dublin, uh, where I'm principal lecturer on the MSc in building performance, and I'm also the principal investigator on the Drive Zero Irish demonstration project. So just to give you an overview of the presentation, um, I want to introduce you to the Drive Zero project, talk a little bit about circularity, and then introduce you to the case study its design and development, the mock-up phase, the actual retrofit and installation of the modular solution, and then we'll talk about lessons learned, show you some other European projects, and talk about application in the Irish context. So Drive Zero is an EU project funded under Horizon 2020. It's looking to show accelerated deep energy retrofit through modular and circular construction solutions. And in doing that, it's demonstrating in seven countries across Europe, you can see there. And of course, here in Ireland, we are one of those demonstration projects. So the Irish team um, include the Irish project partners, uh, formal partners in the EU project, that's uh, TU Dublin as the lead academic research partner, Cody Architects as the lead design partner, uh, Vision Built as the lead manufacturer, and then we had some key stakeholders involved, of course Westmead County Council who were the case study building owners, CISC acting as main contractor, and then a whole range of specialist suppliers and installers and contractors and overseeing and inputting into this was a national advisory board. So briefly to introduce the concept of circularity, which was quite central in the project. On the left hand side here, we have the linear economy with resources uh, going in to a make use and end of life cycle with a lot of resources going to waste and very little going back into the cycle. Whereas on the far right, we have a circular cycle where we have re resources going in uh, to a make and use cycle, but resources going back in a technical cycle in and also in a bio cycle back into the natural system. And so this is the transition we're trying to demonstrate in the project. Here we see the concept in a little bit more detail with resources going in to a manufacturer, uh, processing service, and then at the end of life, uh, going to waste. And in circularity, we're attempting to uh, reduce this output and reduce this need for resources by um, reusing and uh, remanufacturing and repurposing uh, goods and materials in this cycle or facilitating them going into the natural bio cycle and of course um, recycling is considered the lowest level of circularity because it needs to be fully reprocessed and remanufactured it's very energy intensive and there's a lot of loss in that whereas um, reusing our remanufacturing or repurposing are considered uh, more advanced. So there are levels of circularity. Within the Drive Zero project, two overall concepts were proposed. One, the concept of urban mining, where materials from 
waste from the existing building stock could be reutilized in the demonstrator projects. Uh, but in, in the Irish case, we focused on the use of um, bio-based materials into the demonstrator project. While searching for a suitable case study building, we explored uh, some early concepts, looking at a whole range of possible interventions that one could do with modularized systems. And of course, the benefit of a modularized system is that you're not just recladding a building, but you can actually reconstruct portion, portions of the building. You can extend and adapt. So uh, this is just some concepts looking at a diversity of approaches that can be done. And for our situation, we were focusing in on uh, a reclad and um, a small extension to demonstrate the uh, 3D extension concept. And eventually working with Westmead County Council, we found uh, two suitable properties uh, here in a small development on the outskirts of Athlone town two 1970s uh, masonry built social houses. So first step then is undertaking a physical survey of the building and also a energy characteristic survey of the building. So full energy characteristics of the dwellings were assessed. Both dwellings already had some um, upgrades, including in one case, a heat pump, which really improved its efficiency. There was also attic insulation installed. So just to summarize the case study buildings built in 1975, typical three bed semi-detached dwellings, masonry cavity walls, a cut roof with the attic ventilated, so cold roof construction, um, originally with a, a range uh, in the kitchen and an open fire in the living room. Um, one unit had a heat pump and the other unit had uh, the original range, which meant that they were performing very differently. So originally they would have been forming down in the D band, but with the mo minor upgrades, uh, one house was a E1 band and the house with the heat pump was already in a C1 band. And we were trying to get an overall 65, 70% uplift, trying to get them into uh, toward the A3 band, um, or at least on average a 70% uplift. So this is just an outline of the proposed interventions uh, to try and achieve that 65% uplift and also implement the modular solution within within budget so the the principal works the principal demonstration is here in the red box which is the um, installation to the front of a modular circular construction solution along with a, a three-dimensional modular circular extension pod um, the rest of the fabric was upgraded with conventional ewi and um, where needed, we installed new heating systems in one dwelling. Both dwellings had ventilation systems, in one case full MVHR with heat recovery, and in another, another case demand control ventilation. And both properties had um, PV, solar PV installed, and then just some ancillary lighting and control upgrades. During that process and throughout the whole project, um, there was significant uh, engagement, not only with the building owner, but with the occupants themselves, the tenants who remained in situ during the project and were very supportive uh, in the project. So firstly, we were um, getting their consent and agreement to all the stages and of the project, including the need for monitoring. Um, we undertook a occupant survey pre and post works um, giving them schematic information about design concepts and uh, the proposals, both at design stage and also at construction stage. Um, interestingly, it required introducing them and um, doing some briefing and explanation of technologies and services that they would not have been familiar with. 
So we use schematics like this to try and explain MVHR systems and schematics like this to try and explain the concept of uh, stove boiler, which was put in one property. And then during the works, of course, they had to facilitate site visits and inspections and testing, etc., which obviously had some impacts. And then uh, post works, there's uh, inspections and assessments going on, which they needed to facilitate. So quite a bit of tenant engagement, and we're very thankful for their support in that. A key technical demonstration within the project was the development of the circular modular construction system. So the concept was um, originally we had budget for one house, but because we had a case study of two houses, uh, we split that budget across both properties and proposed to install a modular cladding system to the front with uh, an extension. And as that developed and design progressed, it became clearer what that might be. And the fundamental technical challenge was to take a conventional light gate steel system and adapt and develop it into a modular um, circular solution that could be fully assembled and disassembled. We undertook factory site visits to understand the production process and to begin to explore uh, system adaptation to uh, function as a demountable uh, pre-manufactured cladding system. So these are just some early concept sketches and discussions about uh, connections, detailing uh, some of the problems that we may be facing, including in particular uh, getting the system in under the eaves and the impact on ventilation because the cladding system would effectively block off eaves ventilation. So these are first early concepts of um, possible buildup of the light gauge steel system, uh, introducing a bio-based wood fiber board and uh, a bio-based quilt insulation. Um, to try to get something in the target of 0.18 or 0.2 of U value. And then also just looking at possible connection and uh, assembly sequences. One of the central aspects of circularity in construction is the ability to disassemble so that products and materials and elements and components can go back into the use cycle. And normally we're focused on disassembly of products and materials at their base level. But it was important in this project that we achieve design for disassembly at all levels in the building hierarchy. So we worked to enable the panel itself to disconnect from the host wall and that the panel could be reused in its entirety. It's a structural panel and therefore it could be used in another building project intact. The next level of decomposition was that all the components that make up the wall panel could disconnect from each other so that the panel could be used intact or the window system could be used intact. And lastly was the full disassembly of the panel to its constituent materials and products. And we not only tested this theoretically in um, design analysis, but we tested this physically in the mock-up phase. So in this slide, we're just showing some of the concept sketches where we're thinking through and discussing out the uh, assembly disassembly principles, um, how we can get the panel in its, in its entirety and drop it into place and how it can be removed and taken out intact and then how, how the whole panel can be disassembled. And these concepts led to uh, the first set of uh, production details, uh, which were then uh, implemented and tested in the first mock-up. So having developed uh, first level uh, detailing and concepts, we moved to mock-up stage. And the, the idea here was to test manufacturing, installation, buildability, uh, jointing at junctions and weathering, quality of finishes and aesthetics. And in particular, it included a full design for disassembly audit 
where we not only assessed and measured the manufacturer installation process, but we assessed and measured the deinstallation, deassembly, reassembly, and reinstallation process. So the mock-up was designed to explore all the key junctions uh, that we would find in the actual retrofit. Uh, the eaves junction, the ground junction, panel to panel junction, vertically and horizontally, panel to roof, panel to wall and, and corner details and uh, window sill details. A key detail that was at the heart of the um, assembly disassembly concept was um, to facilitate this access zone. So the concept here is that the main bracket is fixed to the host wall and um, it has a pin, a vertical pin, and the panel is simply dropped down onto it. And the panel below has a, seven, has a 100 mil to 125 mil uplift zone, so it can be taken up and off the same base detail that it sits on below. So the panels are held in place by restraint, um, on by gravity and restraint. It is the, it's the, the only bracket that's bolted is the hosting bracket to the main wall. This was the proposed concept uh, shown here in blue for all the stages of um, deinstallation and disassembly and reassembly um, to assess and monitor the impact on all the materials and the fixings and the panels in that process. So here we see mock-up stage A with very simple brackets going in with the, the vertical pin, which is to receive uh, the panels and be held in place by gravity and restraint. Here we see the first panel going in on the back to take up the, the tolerance and the air gap. We had initially proposed neoprene gaskets and an insulation fill, um, but because of lack of compression, we were to change that detail. And there we see the first panels uh, being installed. So the main learnings from mock-up A were to do with tolerance, that more adjustment and tolerance was needed. This impacted on the jointing, which was inconsistent. And again, we felt the tolerance would help get better quality there. The render finish was being questioned because of complications and in, the, in manufacture with wet trades having to be involved and also chipping and marking in the render during uh, installation. Uh, the horizontal joint um, was considered uh, visually poor and also the detailing here, we were sus suspicious of water ingress. Um, the back insulation and neoprene seal was not working. The neoprene was too rigid and we needed to look at an alternative for that. Um, in terms of design for this assembly audit, uh, we did achieve this assembly at all levels. However, the window connection and the sill connection was considered poor. There was quite a bit of damage on disassembling the window unit out. But most of the materials were uh, salvaged and reused. Um, we did the audit of the number of fixings was quite negative. There was a huge diversity of fixings and we felt that could be simplified. But we did do a full reassembly using the base materials that were taken uh, out of the disassembly process. So in mock-up phase B, we designed a new bracket system, learning from uh, colleagues in other European projects. And the intention here in the bracket was to give um, two-dimensional movement. And then in the base of the channel, the, the modular channel, we had a C a C slot rather than a hole and that allowed uh, movement in the other plane. So basically this was designed to give greater adjustability and quite finite adjustability on site uh, to help with variation in the plumbness but also to help with alignment uh, of joints vertically and horizontally and minor adjustment of the panels. And we also then tested uh, switching to uh, cement, high quality cement fiberboard solution for uh, both the cladding uh, and the horizontal jointing. 
and then phase C of the mock-up was to test how we would get a panel under the existing eaves projection. So a mock-up of the eaves was built and a counterweighted hoist was built so that we could keep the panel vertical and uh, install it and get it in under the existing existing eaves. And this is a full full size mock-up of an actual uh, panel that we would use in, in the case building. So out of the mock-up, we had seen that dry finish was preferable. Um, the manufacturers had learned important technical lessons working with new materials. Um, we were concerned about the open jointing and we adapted that to have it semi-open and, and partly closed with drips at the rear. Um, the backing insulation was working better, but we made other improvements and we revised uh, roof details and finishes and also demonstrated how we could install under an existing eaves projection. And within design for this assembly, we were uh, quite convinced that we had achieved that relatively well at all levels in the construction hierarchy. Parallel with the mock-up uh, was uh, another level of uh, site assessment and analysis. And this is um, an excerpt from the Point Cloud survey, which gave us a plumbness um, indicator, a change of plumbness on the front elevation, which was quite critical, showing a significant difference in, in this plane not only in not only vertically but vertically horizontally combined and of course this was part of our rationale for designing the alternative bracketry to uh, be able to cope with increasing levels of um, plumbness variation we also undertook thermal imaging of the existing building and uh, thermal transfer or a sort of equivalent u-value study on the rear wall of one of the properties um, we built a mock-up of the panel for laboratory testing for thermal uh, transfer a very sophisticated monitoring uh, program had been designed and was now uh, implemented uh, and that included full energy disaggregation of uh, electricity and heat uh, um, by component and by room and also uh, air quality relative humidity and carbon and uh, presence and movement detection air pressure testing and leakage audit auditing was carried out on both properties giving us uh, Q50 figures ranging from just above 10 to 12.5 and helping us track where leakage was and propose um, improvements in addition to the works that we were doing on the facade. So following the mock-up and a more advanced site assessment, we moved to final design, uh, particularly also including uh, architectural and discussions with uh, the planners in relation to material changes and uh, finalizing and developing technical and construction detail which then translated into um, manufacturer production drawings uh, contracts were drawing up and programs were drawing up and tenants were engaged and prepared for the construction phase so the retrofit works comprised uh, enabling works to prepare for the works, including to prepare for the modular systems, two-dimensional to the wall and three-dimensional extension. Uh, some conventional works were the installation of windows and the EWI system um, and systems, heating and ventilation and renewables. But the, the key demonstration was the new modular a construction proposal, both the 2D panel and the 3D porch. So here we see the commencement of enabling works and the commencement of installation of EWI uh, to the rear of the building. So we see some groundworks taking place, 
um, at the front and windows being removed and new windows being installed to the rear, the commencement of EWI to the rear and sides and preparation for the modular panels. And here we see the render being removed and the brackets being installed and leveled. Also uh, ground screws being installed to take the porch. And we get a good close up of the bracket here, showing how the plate can move in this direction. And the toggles can take it vertically and horizontally. Then we see the, the modular panels arriving and uh, partial road closure and the crane in place. And here we see the installation of, of the first panel being uh, dropped down onto the host brackets and being restrained to the bracket above. And this is a good shot of the first panel going in being offered up to the brackets and you can see the quilt to the back taking up the airspace and the bracketry giving movement in the two directions. Second panel being installed. and the first upper floor panel being installed with the counterweight system, allowing it to go in under the eaves and then drop down 100 mil onto the receiving bracket. This means that the panels are not stacked. All the panels are independent and can be taken out independently. Here we see reworking of the eaves to facilitate ventilation and also to get uh, insulation continuity and avoid linear thermal bridging. As the modular panels came pre-installed windows, the existing windows are then removed from the interior and the next phase will be making good to the jams, air tightness, insulating and then lining. We see the beginning of the assembly of the 3D pod, including uh, the use of ground screws to support the base floor and the first wall panel going in. Assembly of the pod extension continuing. And then the pod extension structure in place, awaiting windows and doors. You can see the scaffold to the side here for the um, EWI on the gables. We have works to the roof of the extension pod and also finishing at the corner to connect and meet the EWI system. And windows and doors going into the extension pods and finishes comm commencing. Of course, doing a project like this has impacts on um, the existing building and especially when occupants are in situ. So we, we had all the windows had to be lined out and for MVHR systems, um, ventilation systems, we had some ducting uh, to be done. So there were impacts internally as well as the impacts of the works going on externally. Now we're coming to near completion of the external extension pods and EWI system is continuing on the gables. PV array installed on both properties and render system to the rear and sides almost complete. And then we have the dwelling at substantial completion. So you can clearly see here the horizontal joint, which can be opened up, allowing that panel to be lifted 
upwards and taken out intact without affecting the base panel below. And that's the same for all four panels. They can all be removed in this way for potential reuse or for disaggregation and salvaging all the components and materials. In terms of circularity within the modular system, what did we learn? Um, well, we've seen that circularity is actually quite complex. Um, that taking a hierarchical perspective in circularity and construction is essential. Design for this assembly is really at the heart because it facilitates materials, products and elements to come out of construction and back into the reuse phase. Material specification is also really critical. And in that regard, we found very little bio-based material solutions that were Irish. Uh, all the solutions we looked at and incorporated were imported. So that was um, a learning and a finding. Um, in terms of actually achieving design for this assembly, I think the mock-up showed clearly that we could uh, fully disassemble the proposed solution as designed at all levels in the hierarchy. Um, in the 2D wall panel, uh, we achieved that to different degrees. Um, the weakest part was probably at component level with the wall to window junction needing uh, improvement. In the 3D pod, I think it was agreed that a single three dimensional volumetric pod would have been faster and better and um, probably uh, integrating dry finishes internally as well would have speeded up that particular portion of work. Um, so there are proposed improvements to the solution we developed. One would be to reduce the number of layers and the number of materials, particularly fixings, which were seen to be excessive and the diversity of types was quite complex. Um, in terms of materials, we would look to reduce the mass even further and also reduce embodied energy and carbon and transition further to bio-based materials and um, facilitate a solution that facilitates a diversity of external finishes. Some key learnings in relation to modularity. Well, we believe the project has demonstrated the technical uh, viability of modular construction in retrofit and shown that there is potential for its application in high volume contexts where high speed and overcladding could be implemented. It does need to, the systems do need to design uh, for a range of construction contexts and also for the need for a range of finishes requirements. Uh, I think it's clear that dry systems are pref much preferred. Um, DFD is critical if circularity is to be optimized and it's really important to facilitate tolerance and adjustability. The challenges going forward are to find scale so that we can look at how we replicate this in a larger sample and a more diverse stock. And also, I think it's important to look at whether we should have full prefabrication and modularity or partial and what level of completion should be done on site and in factory. So overall lessons learned from the Drive Zero project in Ireland. Um, it's important to have a, a broad partnership in the project and have a wide team base. Um, the budget was probably not sufficient for the scale of project we tried to do. We critique the circularity assessment method as being too simplified and needs to be more holistic. Going forward then, we would hope to have follow on research into circularity and design for this assembly, particularly in modular circular facades and envelopes. We would hope to be involved in some larger scale demonstration projects where we could look at a more holistic whole building overclad, both domestic and commercial. And we would like to have contractor suppliers engagement much earlier in the projects, part of the team and develop more holistic and advanced circularity assessment methods. So finally, I'd like to discuss potential application in the Irish context. Um, we have a very specific building stock. 
um, we have issues in relation to ownership within houses. So some houses are owned by local authorities or social housing providers and private landlords and others are privately owned. So there's a whole diversity, not only of typology, but of ownership, which I think complicates things. We also have quite diverse apartment typologies. And of course, we have a diversity of office, industrial and retail building types. But I think the key benefit and the key strength of a modular solution is the potential to add value beyond um, retrofitting for energy. The modular solution has the opportunity to add volume and space and provide utility and even to fix problems within existing buildings. So here we see a simple roof and wall overclad. But if that roof overclad is extended and we have the same wall, we now have increased space and utility. And we have uh, options to extend and even to provide additional living spaces and buildings uh, or to fix problematic buildings where we may have pitches that are too low or um, construction geometric problems. So there's, there's a whole possibility to provide uh, combined benefits with modular systems, not just energy. So we could be introducing additional space and utility, improving air quality and uh, getting better value for investment, including adding um, residential value for the investment made rather than just uh, cladding. And if we can begin to consider that at an urban scale where we could begin to introduce density um, in urban context, I think it becomes a very interesting proposition. And I, I think this really needs to be looked at. The additional value and the holistic potential benefits of modular construction to provide more than just energy retrofit benefits. But we do have some challenges to applying this in Ireland. We have our housing ownership structure as well as typologies. Uh, we would definitely need to look at planning and maybe provide some exemptions to facilitate uh, a greater adaptation of buildings. There are some regulatory technical issues, but these are very much overcomable. Um, Part D is a, a challenge in relation to what we might call mined products and materials, in other words, second hand. But that issue is being addressed at European level in the Construction Products Directive. Um, the issue of cost competitiveness to conventional retrofit solutions needs to be looked at. And I think that can only be done where modular systems provide added value of uh, utility and space and maybe increasing levels and increasing uh, density. So thank you very much for your participation in this conference and for listening in to this presentation.